Hi, today we're going to be going over the Fibonacci matrix. In this video, using linear algebra and specifically diagonalization, I'm going to prove Binet's formula. If you don't know what diagonalization is, in the description I've linked the post which explains it quite well. Anyways, consider the matrix F, which is defined as so, a 2 by 2 square matrix with 1, 1, 1, 0. What if I considered F squared? I'm going to assume you know how to multiply two matrices together, but if you don't, a very nice trick I have is uh, you take the row, you take the column, and the sum of products is actually going to be the value for where they intersect. So here we can see they intersect at the top left. So the sum of products, which means this times this, this times this plus this, would actually be equal to the top left value. Doing the same thing out for the other spots, we see that f squared is going to be 2, 1, 1. Let's take f cubed. f cubed would be 2, 1, 1, 1, 0 times 1, 1, 1, 0. And multiplying this out, we'd get 3, 2, 2, 1. Let's now try f4. f4 would be 2, 2, 2, 2 1 times 1, 1, 1, 0. And if you do multiply this out, that's going to be 5, 3, 3, 2. So we can clearly see, by induction, you could prove this as well, we can clearly see that, in general, f of n would be f of n plus 1, f of n, f of n, f of n minus 1, where f of n is the Fibonacci sequence. So how would I find 1, 1, 1, 0 to the n, which is f of n, using diagonalization? Maybe we could then equate the values here and find an explicit formula for f of n. Well, if you're not aware of diagonalization, again, there is a post in my bio that explains it, but first we have to find the eigenvalues of f. So setting the determinant of f minus lambda i to be equal to zero and if you don't know how to find eigenvalues I've also linked the post in the description explaining that but setting this determinant to zero we'd have 1 minus lambda 1 1 minus lambda equals zero and that would mean we have minus lambda times 1 minus lambda minus 1 equals to zero uh, expanding this out we'd be left with lambda square minus lambda minus 1 equals to zero this is a pretty nice quadratic equation. If we do solve it, we get uh, lambda equals 1 plus or minus the square root of uh, 5 over 2. And we see that this is the golden ratio, at least the positive part. So since there are two solutions, in other words, two eigenvalues, let's label the first one, lambda 1, as uh, the golden ratio, which is 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2 and the second solution lambda 2 as well the other the conjugate that would be 1 minus the square root of 5 over 2 let's now proceed to find the eigenvectors so the eigenvector associated with lambda 1 would be uh, if we do try to find it that's, uh, just setting up the equation we know by the definition of eigenvectors that we'd have something like this going on here so if we do uh, uh, expand this out we have x plus y and x equals to 1 plus or this is well simply lambda 1 x lambda 2 y and well we then have we, we know that no matter which uh, equation we solve we're gonna end up with the same answer so we have simply x equals lambda 2y or well let's let's try to solve the first one x plus y equals 1 plus root 5 over 2 x if we do shift to the other side we get y equals square root of 5 minus 1 over 2 times x okay that seems like a good enough eigenvector so Actually, we know that this is going to be simply minus lambda 2. So our eigenvector associated to lambda 1 is 
x times minus lambda 2x for any x but of course we can just plug in x equals 1 as well and get a valid eigenvector so for lambda 1 we have the eigenvector 1 minus lambda 2 let's try to find the eigenvector associated with lambda 2 by the definition of eigenvectors again we would have 1 1 0 times x y equals to 1 minus root 5 over 2 times x y so uh, again expanding this out I get x plus y and simply x equals to 1 minus the root of 5 over 2 x and 1 minus the root of 5 over 2 y we can equate the first row once again to find that y would be equal to minus square root of 5 plus 1 over 2x which is simply minus lambda 1x and again we find that a eigenvector associated with lambda 2 is 1 minus lambda 1 now we can set up the diagonalization we know that well uh, the diagonal is going to be full of the eigenvalues which are lambda 1 and lambda 2 and then we'd have p the p matrix is going to be formed by the eigenvectors since we have lambda 1 in the first row the first column should be the eigenvector associated to lambda 1 which is 1 minus lambda and then the next eigenvector is 1 minus lambda 1 all right then uh, we now have to find p inverse p inverse well uh, simply is 1 over the determinant of p times the adjacent matrix of p sorry i think it's called adjugate or adjacent something like that but of p uh, determinant of p is that's going to be minus lambda 1 min plus lambda 2 so uh, that would be minus 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2 plus 1 minus the square root of 5 over 2 and uh, if we do expand this out that is I think I believe that's minus square root of 5 right so we then have P inverse equals 1 over minus square root of 5 using basic rules of matrices uh, we see that our inverse would be minus lambda 1 minus 1 lambda 2 1 but we can also multiply this minus inside to get the final matrix the final inverse matrix as 1 over square root of 5 lambda 1 1 minus lambda 2 minus 1 let's just make sure we've got that right yeah it seems right okay so our final answer would be by again by the theory of diagonalization our final answer would be fn equals p times dn which is the diagonal matrix times p inverse uh, dn is quite simply lambda 1 to the n 0 0 lambda 2 to the n and well p inverse is this whole deal right here so if I do multiply them together let's see what I get again multiplying the matrices we get this is lambda 1 to the n plus 1 and of course there's a 1 over square root of 5 on the outside this is lambda n plus 1 and then the, the other side is lambda 1 to the n uh, here we have lambda minus lambda 2 to the n plus 1 and that would be minus lambda 2 to the n of course times 1 over square root of 5 and now multiplying this with p we have f of n equals 1 over the square root of 5 and uh, if I recall correctly uh, p was uh, yeah okay 1 minus lambda 2 1 minus lambda 1 times this matrix that we just calculated so putting the pieces together uh, let me just write this out it's very easy to get confused here but putting the pieces together this would be 
uh, lambda 1 to the n plus, actually, we know that f of n is, uh, well, f of uh, n plus 1, f of n, f of n, f of n minus 1, so we only need to find the top right answer, and of course, by the technique I just showed you, that means the sum product of this row with this column, so final answer for f of n would be, well, that's, you have lambda 1 to the n, and you have minus lambda 2 to the n. And of course, there's a 1 over square root of 5 on the outside. And that would be the value of f of n. And ac actually, that is exactly what Binet's formula is. If you want to write it in a more compact formula, you know that, well, these lambda 1 and lambda 2, they're the solution of lambda square minus lambda minus 1 equals 0. And by Vieta's formulas, we would then have lambda 1 lambda 2 equals to minus 1, which would imply lambda 2 equals minus 1 times lambda 1 to the minus 1. And if I do write lambda 1 as the golden ratio, we then have f of n equals 1 over square root of 5, the golden ratio, minus minus the golden ratio to the minus n. And that's Binet's formula. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. And again, if you want to review eigenvalues or learn, and if you want to review diagonalization or learn, you can check the links in my description. They have a very comprehensive explanation that is suitable for beginners. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please do leave a like and subscribe.